like that article that Kyle pointed out, I'm a real programmer, and I love JavaScript, and I'm here to tell you why you can't be scared of it anymore. Because I know a lot of you are thinking, yeah, this jQuery stuff's cool, but it's not for me, I can't do this, this isn't, it's, it's too hard. The others of you that are coders are thinking, yeah, this is designer stuff, it's for people who don't really know what programming is. So I'm here to allay your fears and be excited about JavaScript. So first I want to tell a story about a little piece of code. And this piece of code doesn't matter, it's just something I was working on the other day. But I slowly started refactoring it, got a little bit bigger. And I don't want you to read it, I just want you to kind of see the, the patterns. So I refactored it again, it got a little bigger, but you're starting to see something that looks kind of like Ruby, lots of little functions, little methods, stuff happening. What's happening here is it's actually getting cleaner. And I'm using CoffeeScript, so it's gonna look all foreign to half of you, that's fine. Um, but I ended up with, with some code that I was able to refactor, do better each time. Of course I'm testing it, because who wouldn't? Um, but, but I'm doing real code in JavaScript, and I'm having fun with it. I had so much fun working on this little thing the other day. But there's a lot of perceived problems and a few real problems with JavaScript. The perceived problems are things that um, people say that you know that aren't necessarily really true. Um, things we know that aren't true, but that people say. Uh, answer here is jQuery. There's, we'll get more of that. Um, but there's lots of reasons why people don't like to do JavaScript or think that they don't need to. Um, also not true. Use a good browser. Um, <laughs> I'll go back to that. Um, yes, JavaScript is slow if you're using IE6. You know what? Most of your users aren't using IE6 today. I know that isn't true for some of you. Um, that's going to be the difference, though, of whether you can do a lot of really cool things in JavaScript. And if you're doing a public-facing uh, website where the, at least half of your people are using something newer than IE7, you can use lots of JavaScript, and you can abuse it, but don't do that. Um, also, the not object oriented thing. It is, it's prototype based objects, it's a lot more fun. It's crazy, you don't even have to understand it, but it's fun. Um, but there are some real problems, okay? There are real problems. One, and this is I think the biggest one right here, developers don't learn JavaScript. We don't, we just, we, we think it's some web thing that we don't have to actually understand, and it looks easy, like alert, oh look, I have a little thing popping up. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I can I can probably do that in Perl. I haven't written Perl in years. You know, it's I can I can do a hello world in Java, but I'm not a Java programmer. Um, you have to actually learn the languages you're going to be using. It's not hard. Pick up a book, do something. The other problem that's related is the copy problem. Um, you know, Kyle mentioned people you know stealing good ideas from everything else. But before you even get to that, you get well. I used this jQuery plugin that was on Carl's blog, um, and you know, I couldn't get to work, so jQuery sucks. Well, maybe you didn't notice that his blog post was four years old and doesn't even apply anymore, doesn't work with the newest version of jQuery. You know, you have to know what you're dealing with. You can't just copy something and expect it to work. It doesn't work that way. Um, also, debugging is a big question because it's a webby language. We don't know how to deal with it. Hopefully you know that that's not a problem anymore. But you know, you still get things like this. <laughs> it happens. We can get around it, though. Also, uh, JavaScript can be really messy. I actually copied this from some code that I decided was too complex and I didn't want to refactor it on one day. It wasn't until I did this presentation elsewhere that someone pointed out the whole, if not equal to false, false. And they're actually doing it twice here. It's some beautiful stuff there. Uh, but you know, you can write you can write ugly code in any language. Um, it's just, for some reason, people think that JavaScript is the language to write ugly code in. Also, I'm a Ruby guy, so I test my code. I know this is a foreign concept to many of you, but it can be done and you should do it. I'll show you how. Um, so those are kind of like our, our problems. One are the excuses that JavaScript's hard, I don't like it, it's slow, it's ugly. Um, you know, some real problems where we need to learn how to do this and things we can actually fix. So I'm gonna walk you through a, a few different solutions and hopefully like inspire you to learn a little bit more because I don't have enough time to really teach you anything useful today. 
<laughs> the first thing is learn, okay? I want you to pick up a book. I don't care if it's Carl's book, I don't care if it's this book, learn something. If you want to learn JavaScript, the language, <coughs> this is good. If you want to learn jQuery, Carl's book's great, and Jonathan's book, I don't want to miss you either. I've known Carl longer, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to have them both in the same room here. Um, this is a great little book by uh, Douglas Crockford that teaches you more about the, the good parts of JavaScript because it is a language with some dragons. And if you can stay away from those, your life is easier. Obviously, this, this picture's gone around before. And it's, uh, it's funny every time. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, but there, there are good parts to JavaScript. And if you can stick in those, your life will be a lot easier. So pick up some book, learn a little bit more. Try to learn about JavaScript as a language. Um, jQuery. While we're talking about learning, when I got into jQuery, I started with Prototype. I'll go back. Um, I started with the Prototype Framework, uh, which because it was shipping with Rails, and I'm a Rails guy, and I'll mess around with this. Oh, look, it's easy. I don't have to think about it. It wasn't until I started playing with jQuery that I actually learned more about JavaScript as, the, as a language. It, by kind of not giving you things like, class, like classes and inheritance and all this stuff, these weird extra libraries, it makes you learn the underlying language itself. So if you're new to jQuery or if you're even using it but you're kind of staying away from the whole JavaScript thing, use it to help get you more into it. It can, it can ease you in. I want to mention standards because there are actually standards in the JavaScript world. I mean, there's obviously the ECMAScript standard, which I don't know. Jonathan, Carl, have you guys read that thing? It's probably scary. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, they're, 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 they're giving me scared looks, so. It, it does exist, there are standards. All you need to know is that, uh, you know, somebody cares about this. Um, <laughs> it's not just like a free-for-all. We, we hear a lot of the stuff that browsers are doing differently. Yeah, they do, but the bulk of it's the same. And there are standards, and they're evolving, they're doing cool things. Um, the DOM, the DOM is actually pretty standard. And with jQuery, we get nice, you know, ways of abstracting away the parts that aren't consistent. But there are some really cool things in the DOM, and especially with the HTML5 uh, additions, those are pretty well defined and just work out of the box. So speaking of HTML5, there it is. Um, I want to mention documentation as well. Uh, I've recently been introduced to the uh, Mozilla Developer Network's uh, DOM reference. It's a great place to find uh, DOM methods, uh, pretty much anything JavaScript related can find there, and it's kind of geared toward Mozilla products, but it, it's actually really good. So check it out. Um, I found that this little, in their uh, preface, they say that you should read this if you're a web developer or savvy web user who knows something about how web pages are constructed. I know something about how web pages are constructed, so I'll use this site. <coughs> Sorry, slow down. Uh, code conventions. I do find that uh, JavaScript code conventions aren't as well defined as some languages. You know, if you're playing with Java, Ruby, or Python, there are conventions that you follow because everybody does it that way, and it's just how things work. For jQuery plugins, I see a lot of conventions, but in the rest of the world, nah, it's a free for all. Uh, what I'd encourage you to do is make your own within your organization or friends or steal somebody else's. I don't care what they are, but start to do things the same way every time so that you build up a set of conventions. Um, make your, in, enforce some of, the, some of the conventions with JSLint. Now, if you haven't used JSLint, I hope you all have. It's a great little tool written by Douglas, uh, by or, I don't know if it was by Douglas Crockford originally, but it's, it's meant to be like, it's basically like his JavaScript, the good parts, you know, like that plus a validator. So you swoop, throw in your code and it tells you what you're doing wrong or what you shouldn't be doing. Um, the cool thing about JSLint is if your code passes this, it's about like 95% more likely it'll just run cross browser out of the box. It doesn't, you know, it's not perfect. It's kind of like a, an HTML validator, it won't solve all your problems, but if you're getting your stuff to pass JSLint, you're going to be much, much, much happier. Um, 
<laughs> JS Lynn will hurt your feelings, but if you're not afraid of learning more about JavaScript and why you shouldn't do these things, that shouldn't bother you. So let it hurt your feelings. Dive in. Use uh, JS Lint to learn a little bit more. Um, wait. There's also uh, some really cool language features you can start to learn when you uh, get deeper into JavaScript. Um, did you know that you're sitting on a functional language? It doesn't, it's not really a functional language, or is it? You know, like, what's this code here? This is some code we do all the time. Um, you know, just have some function and then have a click handler to run it. That's, that's basically what, that right there is what functional languages do. If they're functional language guys in here, they'll probably tell me I'm half wrong. But really, we're passing, almost, we're passing functions on the, around that can be anonymous. We can do crazy stuff later, later, binding as hell, but it's fun. So you can actually learn more about the weird stuff about this language. You can also learn about JavaScript objects. So I said it wasn't object oriented. Well, it is. It's just not class oriented. It's not the classes and objects that you're used to. JavaScript has this weird thing called a prototype. So every object in JavaScript has a prototype, and you can edit the prototype and change the prototype and do all kinds of crazy things that I, I don't even half understand. But it's actually really cool. You can learn more about this. So if you're a real programmer geek and you think this language sucks, learn about prototypes. Um, they're, they're weird, but they're cool. Um, also, something we can use all the time is think of something like this. If you haven't done a lot with JavaScript, you might you know, think this is like a, a dictionary or hash if you're a Ruby or Python person. This is a simple object. You know? it's, I'm calling it person and I'm giving it some attributes, but that's a valid object. And you should have all seen this because it's part of something that we call JSON. JSON is pretty much wrapped up normal JavaScript objects into a format called a JSON. We pass them around all the time, right? But that's an object. You can treat it like an object. It is an object. You can edit its prototype if you want to add functionality. Cool stuff. Um, here's a more uh, complex object. Here's a meetup. We can fit 200 people. We have an empty list of attendees, and we have a function called add person. Whenever I add, a, I add a person, I throw them into the array, push them onto the array, and at any time I can call announce and tell, say how many people are here. Really simple, but it's an object. It, it should look at least somewhat familiar to you if you're from another language. Objects are pretty cool. We also have a, um, a whole bunch of tools. I feel like this group probably knows all about these. Um, Web Inspector on Chrome and Safari is currently my favorite. It beats Firebug by a little bit, but um, they both have uh, can do great things. And even IE now has developer tools. If you haven't looked at them in a while, you might be surprised that they even exist, but they do. It's amazing. And they're pretty good, too, especially in the IE 9 and upcoming 10. I don't use them, but I've seen them. They look cool. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of tools. Hopefully you've, you've used them. If you don't have Firebug or if you don't use Web Inspector, then just start playing around and watch it. Um, also, we have tons of frameworks we can, we can use and we can learn. Uh, the biggest one is jQuery. Um, there's also a bunch of other, like, I use the term micro frameworks. Some of them are macro. But uh, there's a lot of other frameworks that fit within the jQuery world. Um, one we're using right now at Collective Ideas is Spine.js. If you've seen Backbone, it's similar. It's a little more lighter weight. Um, but it's for doing like single page apps and all kinds of crazy stuff. And it, uh, it doesn't require jQuery, but it works in conjunction with it really nicely. Um, yeah, here's a little, here's their example app. It's a little to-do list or an address book. I don't know, one of both. I don't know what it is. Uh, there's also things like Sugar.js. Um, you know, one of the things it adds is uh, date processing. If you've ever tried to do date processing in, in out-of-the-box JavaScript in a browser, you have probably I'm surprised you're still alive. Um, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. But like something like Sugar.js can make this so much easier. And there are lots of other little micro frameworks that either, you know, work with jQuery or just sit next to it and work beside it. You know, you can use these little things and have all kinds of fun. 
Sugar does all kinds of other stuff too. I don't, I don't remember. Dates were the one that I got into it for. Dates are so bad in JavaScript. Um, I also want to talk about clean code because you can write clean code. It just takes a little bit of work. Um, the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure you're writing unobtrusive code. This one I think is probably the hardest, but you know, we've all hopefully we've learned not to do this. Okay, if you're using on click or on change or on load or on whatever, you're doing it wrong. Um, we're beyond this, right? There's no reason we need to have an on click handler on every on every link because it gets really really <laughs> repetitive. And you know what computers are good at? Uh, getting rid of repetition. You know, with jQuery, we might do something like this, throw a class on it, and do a, uh, a click handler to do a confirmation. Pretty simple stuff. Um, it works better when we, when we have more. We can even throw the class on a container element. This should be second nature to you. Um, this piece, though, actually my little comment, in external file, uh, it's very easy to just start throwing things into your HTML pages. And that's a really bad habit you should stop today. If you do one thing, stop that right now. Because it makes your code a little, little less maintainable. And you're just you're chipping away at that clean code philosophy. It's just not what you want to do. Um, and also use on, because that's, you know, jQuery 17 you use on, right? Um, use JS Lint and use it all the time. If you can, if you use any kind of editor that's decent, uh, build it in. Here's TextMate, my personal favorite, although I'm using TextMate 2 now, it doesn't work. Um, anytime I save a file, I can see right there how many JS Lint warnings. And with a key command, I can see what they are. Figure out how to do that in your editor. There are sites that tell you how to do it for pretty much anything. Um, if you're doing that and you're sitting there working on your files, Every time you hit save, you see that pop up. It doesn't. You don't have to deal with this file that now has 300 errors. You're dealing with two, and you're like, oh god! But I edited one line. What did I do? Well, I forgot a semicolon, and then okay, it gets really, really easy, and your code is going to be so much better as a result. Uh, semicolons are one of the things that screw everybody up. So JSLint will catch them, or your editor can catch them. Whatever you can do. Um, also, watch the console. Uh, when you're doing any kind of uh, JavaScript coding, have Firebug, have Web Inspector there, and look at the number of errors that are popping up. And you know, see them right away. You don't have to wait until something breaks. If you see an error, OK, go we'll fix it. Um, I gave a version of this talk at GR Dev Day, and I got a, a laugh that they were going to be doing some uh, weird Google Maps stuff. I actually found out later that when you do iframes, um, you're pretty much always going to get errors because of a bug with the web inspector. So you do have to be a little bit careful, but don't use iframes. Um, also, console.log, use this. It's in every modern browser now has this. Don't use it in production code, but use it. And you know, instead of just doing simple like help, which is good if you need to dig in there and find something, um, give it a jQuery object. You know, that'll give you a nice array of all the uh, matching inputs. You can use it on richer objects. It really works, especially in WebKit. Finally, uh, organize your code. So, uh, and I would say then concatenate. So what I mean by this is don't make giant JavaScript files. I don't know why that people think this is OK, but don't make giant files. Uh, make lots of little files, and then use some kind of script to concatenate them together, possibly minify them before you uh, ship the code. I don't know why we think we have to write everything in these giant files. It's, it's unmaintainable. It's not clean. You wouldn't do it, well, you'd probably do it in some languages, but you shouldn't do it. So don't. And never prematurely optimize. That's just not cool. Um, I do want to mention testing because I want to mention testing. I want to tell you that testing is possible in JavaScript. There are unit testing tools like QUnit, um, which looks like that, really simple stuff. If you've done any kind of automated testing, it uh, gives you a nice little output like this when you run it. Um, there's also Jasmine, which is more like RSpec, 
in the Ruby world or any any spec in any kind of language. Uh, just a little bit cleaner. Really easy to use. Really fun stuff. Um, there's also a whole a whole idea of integration tests. A tool we use every day is called Cucumber. It comes from the Ruby world, but it's pretty cool. You write tests that look like this. You, you know, I'm ordering a book, I go to the home page, I follow a link, I follow another link, I press add to cart, I select the shipping thing, I press checkout. And this is a test that I can actually run. It does weird pattern matching stuff that, if you like Ruby and regular expressions, it's fun, but it's not that hard, you can do it. And it gives you tests that run in the browser. So I'm gonna really quickly fire up some tests. Uh, the, some tests uh, that we were working on just the other day. Um, it runs those same kind of English language tests in uh, Firefox or Chrome or whatever. Or it can even run them headless. The nice thing is it's testing your JavaScript. It's, it's hitting all that and making it happen. So blah, blah, blah. So now here's my site and instantly I have tests that are flying through and things are happening. Um, you know, we're Ruby people so this kind of stuff is we're just going to install it because it's right there. But if you're not a Ruby person, if you're not doing a Ruby app, you don't need to know much about it. Um, you can be doing this with your own apps, and it's really, really cool. So, fun stuff. Yeah, it's still going. Hold on, I know. Um, finish up quick. Um, on the browser. Uh, next steps, if you want to get more advanced, look at some of the compilers. Look at Google's compiler, Yahoo's compiler. Uh, what these do is they can minify your scripts down really tight so that you get really good performance in the browser. And it gives you nice performance, quicker downloads. Um, look at something like CoffeeScript. I was very skeptical, skeptical of CoffeeScript. I heard about it in one of these ages ago. Um, we've embraced it. We love it. It writes, uh, it compiles, so it takes normal code and compiles it to JavaScript. So a little uh, random thing here and expands it out to something bigger. The syntax is a little bit weird, but I get over it. The big thing for me is it passes, by definition, the compiled CoffeeScript code passes JS land. So you know that you're getting cleaner code than you probably write by hand. So I like that. It also gives you classes, which you don't technically need in JavaScript because it has prototypes, but um, it, it can make things that seem a little bit more easy for if you're coming from another language. So an animal, a snake, a horse, you get the idea. And it compiles down to this whole, you know, it looks dirty because it's just, there's a lot of it, but it's it's JSLint compatible code and it's doing some really nice things for you. So check out CoffeeScript. If you want to get really crazy, dive into something like Node, where you can do some invented IO. Um, but that's my talk. I want to get you guys to love JavaScript. I want to teach you to never, ever, ever learn to use inline scripts. I want you to run your code against JSLint and organize your code. And please try to run tests. It's not that hard. And if you do that, you'll have fun. And you will learn that JavaScript isn't the scary thing. It's, it's fun. <laughs> so there's my code again. Yeah, whatever. So that's me. I'm Daniel Morris on Twitter. You can find me or Collective Idea, and I'm happy to answer more questions. Answer questions later if you have any. Sorry, I talked so fast. Thank you very much.